Hi everybody, this is Paul here from the Hill Club. Due to the COVID-19, we had to close our club. Uh, we hope to open up very shortly again, as soon as we fight this virus. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, stay indoors, and stay healthy. Today, we're gonna to bring you an interactive class of how we'd actually teach uh, a beginner. So, hope you enjoy, guys. Now we're gonna warm up our shoulders and our arms. So put your hands straight out like this. Try to relax, go around, more rotations, get bigger, and rotate fully, and back. We're going to check out our wrist. And next, we're going to put our left leg in front. We're going to use our right hand, we're going to bring it up. We're going to go around for three, go one, two, three. Three and back. One, two, three. Next, we're going to bring our toe to our baby finger. We're going to get the blood rushing down to our fingertips. So we're going to spin as fast as we can for five seconds. One, two, three, four, and five. And change your stance, the opposite way. Bring your left hand up. And now go one, two, three, and back. And bring your toe leg into your baby finger and spin. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to start the warm up. We're going to take around seven minutes to do a warm up. So try to keep up with me if you can. So we're going to start off nice and easy. Just jump running on the spot. And we'll spend 30 seconds on each exercise. <laughs>
for the, to the body. It's crucial to get in the blood circulating around each and every little muscle and it also can help prevent injury. You can do that warm up as slow as you like and keep it at your own pace, especially when you're starting off. Just try to maybe sing a song while you're doing it. And if you can't sing, obviously your body's under too much stress and you're panting too much. So slow it down a little and enjoy it while you're beginning. Next, we're going to move on to a little bit of stretching. So what I want you to do is put your left leg in front, your right leg behind. Hold your hands up high, put your right leg, point your toes forward, keep your muscle nice and relaxed. So we're just going to swing our leg for seven times. So we'll start nice and up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're going to change around. We're going to swing on our left. So hands up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And next we're going to change around again. We're going to swing our right leg in towards our left, around, and back. So again, we're going to gradually get higher as we go up in the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're going to change around. Swing on our left. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. After that, we're going to bring our legs apart. We're going to point our left toe. We're going to bend our knee. Keep our back leg as straight as possible. We're going to come down, feel the stretch. Turn our shoulders and sit and hold for approximately 20 seconds. That position, change over to the opposite side. <coughs> and again, we're going to change over. This time, when we change over, we're going to go on our toes, get our heel face to ceiling. And sit down. And again, stay low, opposite direction. center. Again, only if you can, you're going to come down and see if you can touch the floor. So most importantly, keep your legs as straight as possible when you're doing this. Again, anybody who finds it really easy, go again, bring your legs out and bring your elbows to the floor. Change over, opposite direction. And come back to the center, bring your hands here. Take your legs in slowly. And coming up, keep your legs a little kick out. 
move. Right, next we're going to move on to how we should stand. Especially when you do martial arts, a lot of different martial artists have different ways. This is the way I enjoy to do it myself and the way I like to teach my students. So try to put your feet shoulder width apart. Take a step forward with your non-dominant leg. And for me, that's my left leg. So I'm going to step forward. I'm going to slightly bend my knees. I'm going to bring my hands up to the air. I'm going to bring them down. My chin, I'm going to tuck it in. I'm going to keep my hands here. I try not going to be too stiff. I'm going to try to be relaxed. So this is where I use my stance. So you can easily move around from side to side. And the same applies if you're a sofa. You just do the complete opposite to what I said. So you just put your right leg in front. Hands up. Chin down. And stand in your stance. The reason why we do this is if you move around, and especially inside the ring, if I stand flat-footed, if I get caught with a punch or a kick, my balance is going to be completely off. If I get caught with a kick or a punch when I'm standing in the correct stance, then a lot of pressure will go onto my back leg. Especially when I'm moving forward, I bring all the power from my back leg straight through with my right hand as well. Also. So try this, try getting your stance. I'm going to give you a little exercise to practice. So hands up again, step forward, hands down, chin down. All I want you to do is just get used to your footwork, use your back leg, you're going to push off the back leg, push forward, push forward, when you get two steps, keep your hands up, you're going to use your lead leg, push back, and push back. So we're going to do it one more time, push forward, push forward, push back, and push back. That's our stance. Next thing we're going to move on to guys is a, a jab. Jab is probably the most important tool in any combat sport. It's kind of, I call it the master key. It opens up a lot of doors for everything else. So just to explain how I like to draw it. Again, I go back into my stance. I keep my guard up. And a lot of people will hold their hands really, really tight. So for anyone that's beginning, make sure that you do not put your thumb inside your fingers. Because if you make contact like that, you're going to damage your thumb. So keep your hands open. Close them. Put your, lock your thumb in and stand. So what I like to do, I like to keep my hand nice and relaxed, so when I try on a jab, I bring it out slowly, and then I close it on the second of the impact. So the most thing, most important thing here to acknowledge is where my hand is landed when I throw that jab. A lot of people throw it here, so my chin is wide open for a punch. So the way I like to throw it, I throw it dead straight, like this, that my shoulder is protecting my chin. So it's dead straight right in front of my eye line. So you can't practice this enough, lads. You need to draw it out, then straight, and bring it back. And again, just from a different angle. So again, if I throw that jab, I throw it dead straight out, and bring it back. So one more time, out, and back. And another very good telltale sign for anyone that's really experienced watching this. A lot of people, when they throw the jab, they bring the elbow up. So being in the sport a long time, I can read that a lot, lot quicker than someone throwing a dead straight line. So the quickest from A to B is dead straight line. So when you're throwing it, throw it out, rather than up and throw. So it's a common mistake with boxers and kickboxers and all martial artists. Try to get it dead straight, back. So a little exercise to do just to practice this. Start to really, really slowly do it for about a minute or two just to see what way your body's lining up. You need to do this for maybe a couple of years, to be quite honest, just to get it mastered. Because you need to keep repetitively doing these movements before your mind and your body correspond to them. So again, you can just practice small exercises just on your toes, stop, jab. On your toes, stop, jab. And again, we're gonna do this for 10. So on our toes, we're gonna move, we're going to stop, we're going to plant, we're going to jab. On our toes, stop, plant, jab. That's two, three, four, five, and again from a different angle, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And again, one more very important thing. A lot of people, the common mistake that we all make is when you throw this, we do this. The hand goes down. So you can see, 
this is. So the most important thing is try to keep your right hand tucked in right along your jawline here just for protection at all times. So when you draw it out, you keep it tucked in right around this area. You can see. Again, elbow tucked in, take your rib cage as well. Right, next we're going to move on to how we should throw our right hand or for a southpaw, how you should throw your left. So again, everybody has different ways of teaching, we're just going to teach you how I like to teach it. So first of all, back in our stance, we're going to throw our right hand. Again, as I said earlier on with our left, it's another common mistake with your right, is bring your elbow out and throw it. So what I like to do again is try to keep my elbow in tight and when I throw it, dead straight line again. Again, my shoulder is protecting my chin and my left hand is back here protecting this area also. So most important thing here when we're throwing this hand, a lot of people will think that a lot of, if you have a big muscle, you hit really hard. You probably will hit hard, but a lot of the power comes from the legs. It comes from the ground up and straight out through the hand. So what I would like to do here is we like to throw the right hand out. So to get that extra bit of pressure, my back leg is just going to pivot a little and I'll push and throw that right hand. So I'll step it back, again, pivot from the hip, throw it out, and back. One more time, pivot from the hip, out, and back. Again, you can do the simple exercise of up to 10 on your toes, stop, plant, pivot, throw it back. That's one, again, on your toes, stop, pivot, two, again, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to stay on our toes and we're going to put both of them together. We're going to go left and right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And anybody watching at home, you can do this four or five times, up to ten, just to keep it teaching the body. So keep it going, the more you practice, the better you become at it. Right, next we're going to move on to how to actually throw a kick when we're using our hands as well also. So we're going to stand back in our stance again. So we're going to visualize that we're pushing our left and our right. So the next thing what we want to do is we want to try to push somebody away from us. We're going to use our back leg, we're going to keep our hands up. So we're going to go one, two, my knee comes up, I'm going to push from my hip, push straight through. So again, this is called a push kick. It's actually to push somebody away from you. So you can use this in different ways. So I can come forward, one, two, and push to the midsection. Or again, I can push forward, one, two, hands up, and push to the face. But the most important thing is when we're kicking, is when you kick the ball of your foot, this is the area that you want to make contact with. So you're going to toes back and kick. So again, you're going to go left, right, guard up, and push. So we're going to do 10 exercises for that, or sorry, we're going to do that movement for 10 times. We're going to come in, one, two, kick. That's one. And two. One, two, kick. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Right. Next one we're going to do, we're going to say to you a little challenge to anybody who's watching this. We'd love to see your movements. So what the challenge is, just in the movements that we just taught you. So you're going to go left, right. You're going to use the push kick as we just showed. Push. So this time we're just going to change it up a small bit. We're going to go left, right, and instead of bringing our leg back after the push, we're going to push, we're going to drop it down in front, we're going to bring our back leg up, our knee, and we're going to lift and kick. So all together what we're going to do is go left, right, your back leg, push, drop it down in the front, bring your left knee up, and kick. So let me try out my best one and let's see if you can beat me at this. So one, two, three, hook, kick. 
Let me see you beat it. I hope everybody enjoyed the class. So what we're going to do now is just going to do a little cool down just to stretch out the muscles. So first of all I want you to bring your left hand out in front, bring it across to your right shoulder, bring your hand up and stretch. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. And next, bring your hand up, bring it down as if you're scratching your back, catch your elbow and push down. And not so well. And next, just go slowly rotate our hips. Especially when you're cooling down guys, make sure to keep everything in slow motion. Go and speed it up. We're trying to get the heart rate down and lower the body temperature. Next we're going to grab our right leg. Catch. Take our toes. Try not to have your leg out. Try to keep it in close. Again, a lot of people here struggle with their balance. So I see a lot of young people holding on to their ear. I don't know does it work. Try it if you're falling around with this or hold a piece of wall or a table. And opposite side. And down. Alright, just as we finish our classes, ready, sets, engine, and bow. Thank you for watching. Stay safe at home.